Mars harbors lots of mysteries and stark contrasts. Endless barren stretches of rocky wasteland lie next to tremendously high volcanoes, and the planet's surface in general bears witness to countless collisions in the distant past, with gigantic canyons and craters as their solid reminder. A rarefied atmosphere is saturated with minuscule particles of rusty sand, with strong winds swirling it in continuous furious sandstorms. This is what Mars is like, a mysterious and forbidding planet. Let's take a closer look at it. Mars lies approximately one and a half times as far from the Sun as the Earth. In contrast to our planet, its radius is twice as small, its mass is around 10.7% that of the Earth, and the freefall acceleration on the surface is almost three times as little. The temperature fluctuates between 153 degrees Celsius below zero at the poles and 35 degrees Celsius above zero at the equator. The area of Mars's surface is roughly the same as that of all our continents combined. Its terrain is extremely diverse, with some geological features reminiscent of those of our planet and others quite unique and peculiar. The surface of Mars is currently closely observed from the planet's orbit by eight automatic space probes. The data collected by them reveals that there is a vast light spot in the planet's western hemisphere. This region is the largest volcano in the solar system, and it is known as Olympus Mons. Today, this is the starting point of our tour around the Red Planet. Olympus Mons towers as high as 26 kilometers over the plains surrounding it. This is roughly two and a half times the height of Mount Everest. It is assumed to be a shield volcano formed with multiple sheets of solidified lava. According to today's assumptions about the planet's inner makeup, there are no tectonic plates under the surface, which is why magma's eruption point can remain in the same spot for a long time, for hundreds of millions and even billions of years. That accounts for the fact why ejected lava spills out to cover incredibly vast areas, with a layer that subsequently turns into a rocky shield. The average diameter of Olympus Mons measures around 600 kilometers, and its area is over 300,000 square kilometers. These figures are comparable with the area of an average-sized European country, like Poland or Italy. A giant depression formed with six calderas, or collapsed volcanic craters, is located in the center of the volcano. The diameter of the depression measures around 85 kilometers, and its depth reaches as far down as 3 kilometers. Olympus Mons is so high that the atmospheric pressure at the top is 50 times lower than at the foot. Since the atmosphere on Mars is about 160 times more rarefied than that of the Earth, the conditions on top of the volcano are slightly short of those in the vacuum. That is why the Red Planet's highest mountain cannot expect any visitor probes. The atmospheric density would be too low for parachutes to slow down a descending capsule with a Mars rover inside. With the average slope of Olympus Mons quite small, at only 5%, the volcano's edges end in almost sheer abysses of up to 7 kilometers high. It still hasn't been established for certain how such enormous slopes came to form. According to some assumptions, it was done by an ancient ocean on Mars. Other hypotheses hold sandstorms accountable, which continuously rage in this area. When we climb down from Olympus Mons and fly over its surroundings, we can see that there are lots of overlapping ridges and isolated mountains. Some of these formations stretch as far as a thousand kilometers from the volcano's edge. It is assumed that they may have formed as the giant mountain slopes were eroding, or else due to movements of ancient ice caps. Whizzing on southeast from Olympus Mons, we will find ourselves in a vast region known as Tharsis. This volcanic upland, formed by solidified streams of lava, covers roughly one-fourth of the entire planet's surface. Its area of around 30 million square kilometers is comparable with that of Africa. Interestingly, the upland is 10 kilometers higher than the plains surrounding it, and its age could be about 3.7 billion years. There are a great number of volcanoes here, some of which only slightly smaller than Olympus Mons. 
Arsia Mons, for example, rises as high up as 19 kilometers, which makes it the second highest peak on Mars. With a summit caldera measuring 110 kilometers, the overall diameter of the mountain is over 400 kilometers. A unique natural phenomenon can be observed over the volcano every year for a short time. As sun rays warm the mountain's slopes, small dust spirals into a dense cloud, helped along by air streams going upward. This cloud may float up to 30 kilometers above our Sea Mons and may be scattered by winds across vast areas. Vertical pits can be seen in different places all over the upland. They are quite deep, with the bottoms quite unobservable. The diameter of the largest one measures around 150 meters and its depth cannot be less than 178 meters. These pits are thought to be collapsed lava tubes. Tharsis is made up of dozens of overlapping shield volcanoes. In the billions of years of their eruptions, great amounts of CO2 and water vapor were released into the Martian atmosphere. Mathematical modeling shows that the amount would be enough to shroud the planet with an atmosphere one and a half times as dense as that of the Earth. These estimates are indirect evidence of the fact that in the past, conditions on Mars may have been more favorable for life to originate there than now. With its gravity comparatively weak, however, the planet failed to retain its atmosphere and was eventually stripped of it. Moving on to the east from the plateau, we will get to the region known as Valles Marineris. It is a network of gargantuan canyons stretching for up to 4,500 kilometers. The width of the canyon reaches 600 kilometers and it's more than 11 kilometers deep. Images reveal that the slopes of most of the canyons in the central and western parts of Valles Marineris have a stratified structure typical of deposits at the bottom of a large body of water. It is quite likely that the canyons used to be completely submerged underwater in the distant past. There are some truly invaluable paleontological finds to be extracted from the rock deposits in this region. The eastern part of the valleys are areas with a rather chaotic relief. There are vast labyrinths made up of comparatively small canyons, abysses, mountains and plateaus. Further north, the terrain evens out into a relatively smooth plain known as Chrysplanitia. Its vast areas became the final resting place for the debris of the Sojourner Mars rover and also for the Viking 1 probe, which sent the first color images of Martian landscapes to the Earth as far back as in 1976. According to the widely accepted hypothesis today, Valles Marineris came to be in the early stages of the planet's formation. Erosion and geological processes were to deepen and widen the canyons later on. One version has it that the systems of Chasmatis is thought to have formed after volcanic eruptions on the Tharsis upland. Another version claims Utopia Planitia to be the cause for their formation, which lies on the other side of the planet. This vast round lowland is likely to be an impact crater from an extremely large asteroid that would have hit the planet's surface. The planitia's diameter measures some 3,300 kilometers. The terrain of the surface itself is rather flat and smooth. There were several attempts to explore Utopia Planitia by different space probes. In 1979, the Viking 2 lander beamed back panoramic images of its surface to the Earth. In 2016, the Sherard radar on the MRO probe located rich deposits of water ice mixed with dust underground. In May 2021, the Chinese rover Zhurong touched down on Utopia Planitia. It has covered over 1,000 meters of the red planet's surface by now and has beamed back hundreds of images. Unfortunately, it cannot dig as far down as the water-carrying layer, with the latter as deep as 1 to 10 meters down. In the north, Utopia Planitia borders on Vestitas Borealis, a giant lowland surrounding the northern part of the planet and covering about 40% of its total area. Moving southwest from the center of Utopia Planitia, we will reach Isidis Planitia. The region on its western edge has been the focus of people's special attention for almost eight months now. Of course, it is all about the Jezero Crater. It is likely that millions of years ago there used to be a body of water here that has dried up by now. The Perseverance Mars rover and Ingenuity, the first ever helicopter flown beyond the Earth, 
have been exploring the bottom of the crater since the 18th of February 2021. The Jezero Crater was chosen for the mission because it appeared one of the most promising places to discover traces of Martian life. The crater is posited to have formed around 4 billion years ago after a massive celestial body fell on Mars. The impact crater measured some 49 kilometers. As I've already mentioned, it is thought that it used to be filled with water and the Hesperian of the geological history of Mars is singled out as the most likely period for that. The Hesperian started some 3.5 billion years ago and continued for around a billion years. Atmospheric pressure on the planet at the time is estimated to have been comparable with that on the Earth, with the surface temperature reaching 50 degrees Celsius. Rock samples recently extracted from the crater's bottom by the Perseverance rover are hard evidence of that. They still have to be transported to the Earth for deeper analysis, but it is clear even now that at some point the rocks have continuously been in close contact with liquid water. Perseverance has already delighted scientists with great amounts of useful data, and the mission is still far from being completed. The probe is designed for 14 years of operation, which means that there are still hundreds of finds to extract and kilometers of Martian terrain to cover. That is why our tour around Martian expanses is not yet over. With all the considerable effort put into studying it, the Red Planet still harbors innumerable mysteries. Some bold predictions may come true even in the nearest years, and humans will finally set foot on the Martian surface for the first time ever. This event will be a new major milestone in the exploration of the solar system and the beginning of a new era of discoveries, and as they happen, we will do our best to bring you updates on all of them. Your support means a lot to us. Let's keep in touch.